for this video, I'm going to talk to you about some metal books. Yeah, books! They're so exciting, aren't they? For me personally, a lot of what I have learned about metal is from the internet and books. I mean, this video is not going to be about every single metal book there is out there, but this is just going to cover some noteworthy releases that got me into the music years ago. When I first got into the mighty force known as the metal, a friend of mine recommended this book to me. Choosing Death, The Improbable History of Death Metal and Grindcore. This is the 2004 edition, which it's been revised once or twice. I really like it because while you're reading, if you forget who everybody is, you can just go back to this beginning part with a cast of characters, see which bands, which person's been in, how long they've been in it. So this is a pretty informational book. You kind of have to pay attention to who's in what band and when they did things and who did what exactly. What I also like is little epilogues with each band and each member after said band or said member has quit or retired. What else is cool is this Essential Discography, which is basically just like a list of important albums. Anyway, so this book is kind of a broad history of the early 80s to 2004. It explains a lot about how metal evolved from the hardcore punk era. It also shows its evolution from there and how it got more extreme as time went on. For me, it explained a lot about the early tape trading scene. It makes me feel lucky to be in the age now where we have the internet. We can access this music and all of these bands easily. Aside from the occasional typos, it's a pretty good read. Soundtrack is pretty good, too. Sometimes the writing will be telling several different stories in the same chapter, so so again, you kind of have to pay attention, but it's for the information that it gives and for the rare pictures that are on the pages, it's, it's definitely worth the read. Swedish Death Metal by Daniel Ekeroth. I friggin' love this book. As the title indicates, this focuses more on the Swedish death metal scene and the Swedish thrash metal scene, and it even mentions the first few years of the Norwegian black metal scene and how it affected Sweden. It's really friggin' nice, and I love the way it's written. It's written in a way where the book feels like it's having a conversation with you. I mean, it's so packed with tons of information, but it's written in a way that it makes you feel like you're not being scolded. It makes you feel like you're having a conversation with a friend. So you got all kinds of great information about early demos and early bands. Hey, there's even a massive list of hundreds of bands in the back of the book. All kinds of rare tour posters, all kinds of rare photos. And there's a three disc companion soundtrack, which is really amazing. Like, there's all kinds of rare demos and rare things that have never been released. It's also got a big list of fanzines. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty big book with 446 pages and about 276 pages worth of text, but it's actually an easy read. I also really love the front artwork. It's done by Nick Anderson of Entombed. I also like the way the book speaks critically about the albums that he's talking about. True Norwegian Black Metal by Peter Best. Look at how huge this thing is. I absolutely love the picture of Natafrost on the cover. And this book is so big and the cover is so intimidating that this is the kind of book that you want to put on a coffee table and just let your friends look at it in shock and despair. Even the friggin' side of the book is cool to look at. Anyway, but this isn't really a text-driven book. I mean, yeah, every 50 pages or so, there's like a few paragraphs, maybe a couple pages that you have to read, maybe a couple timelines, maybe a couple magazine excerpts. But for the most part, it's a photography book. Some really friggin' high-resolution, high-quality pictures. Some really beautiful scenery, some nice footage of shows, pictures of some of the bands, pictures of satanic rituals. It's even got a couple scanned Slayer Mag articles in here. It's got some truly amazing pictures of the landscapes. Of course, I'll have the occasional quote once in a while from some famous black metal people. I mean, reading this book made me want to take a vacation to Norway. Also, if you're familiar with the Varg Vikern's Euronymous story about how Varg murdered Euronymous, this is the infamous Kerrang article, which he basically kind of admits that he did it. I mean, given that this article is kind of rare, it's nice to see it in printed form again. There was also another black metal book titled Lords of Chaos. It's not really about black metal as much as it is about Satanism, Varg Vikern's, and Odinism. Not a central reading, but many of the bands who have been interviewed for the book have claimed since its release that the information is inaccurate and that many of the interviews have had words twisted and misinterpreted. So if you're going to read it, take it with a large grain of salt. And here we go. This is probably the Bible of metal. Metallion, the Slayer Mag Diaries. This features every single issue of Slayer Mag that there is. Of course, a lot of you are already familiar with Slayer Mag, but Slayer Mag, you know, is this huge fanzine from the 80s, and it continued up until the 2000s. Now, between the issues, you got like a short little history of the author and what he was going through at the time and how he was making the stories and how he was getting the interviews, and it explained how he got better as he went along as far as how he made the magazine and how it was printed, how he got the interviews, how quickly he was doing it, what he was doing on his spare time. It kind of puts you in perspective as to why he gained so much respect from doing this magazine. And did I mention that this book is huge? 719 pages. Anybody can read 719 pages from a regular book, 
But look, some of the text is kind of small, so you're going to have to make a lot of time to read through this whole book. It's definitely something you want to read while you're on vacation, or space it out, like read two issues every month or so, because some of the issues are kind of long. All in all, it is absolutely wonderful. Lots of rare interviews, and it really puts you in the perspective of actually being there during the 1980s and the 1990s when some of these bands and some of these albums have, uh, have emerged. Only Death is Real, an illustrated history of Hellhammer and early Celtic Frost from 1981 to 1985. This was written by their guitar player. Reading this book definitely put me in the mood to listen to some Hellhammer and Celtic Frost. If there was any metal band that needed to write an introduction on what it was like to be one of the first, it's this band. It explains how they got into the music and all the competition that was going on at the time between them and Venom. And it also explained how it was really difficult to find musicians who had the same vision, had the same influences, and had the same dreams about what kind of band and what kind of music that they wanted to play. They risked their social lives, they wanted to burn bridges to create this music, they got turned down by everybody. The people who produced their demos thought it was the worst thing they ever heard, and they wanted to be the most extreme band ever. And with all the discouragement that they faced, and all the troubles, and all the alienated friends, and all the alienated parents, and, and after even losing their jobs over it, they still went on this massively hard, difficult journey to create what would be Celtic Frost. This even includes some of the newsletters that they sent out when they were still Hellhammer. Then of course when Celtic Frost sent out some newsletters, there were a couple of those in here too. Oh yeah, that's nice. My favorite part of the book was when Hellhammer got to meet Venom at a concert, and they said, we're heavier than you. And then, when somebody finally got a cassette player and they played the Hellhammer demo, Hellhammer had won the respect of their heroes. Let there be Guar! 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 I love Guar! Yeah, see the front cover, you know, changes pictures a couple times, it's really nice. And of course, you, get, you got the back with the scum dogs of the universe photos. You open the book and there's every Guar logo. And then of course there are little coloring contests and all kinds of promoter letters from Sleazy P. Martini. Huge list of the people that killed. In the middle of the book here you kind of have these fan letters and drawings. Things of that nature. This book is only 357 pages but you can finish it in like two days. Anyway, but this book, it's really a history of Guar. It's just as much an illustrated history as it is a text history because they're like every single page is filled with all kinds of photos, rare footage, things you've never seen before. Talks about every album, most of the movies, things that they went through at the time, all the drug problems they might have been having, all the newspaper flyers, all the times they might have gotten arrested, clarification on some rumored stories, their burnout, their rise again to power. You should read this or Guar will kill you. I hope this has increased your literary senses. Thank you for watching. See you soon.